Now, we may not think of it often in this way, but I would assert to you this morning that our faith is and always has been a walking faith, a faith that walks. In fact, a number of theologians have tried to capture this sense of what it means to be a person of faith, uh, and in particular one titled a book that is, uh, says, the journey is our home. The journey itself is our home. And the truth is, any kind of quick reading through the Bible, through Scripture, shows that faith over and over and over again is a moving faith, a faith that walks. From the Hebrew slaves who flee Egypt and walk for 40 years through the wilderness, to Jesus in the Gospels. In fact, the Gospel of Mark uh, has been described by some biblical scholars as a long walk to Jerusalem. It's all about Jesus always walking and moving toward Jerusalem. To, if you read any of the book of Acts, which is all a story about Paul walking over the empire and young Christians walking, sharing the good news. So much so that their self-description, we are told, as followers of Jesus, is they called themselves the people of the way. So the journey is our home as followers of Jesus. In fact, uh, that's a significant spiritual practice, has always been a spiritual practice of those of us who follow Jesus. In fact, uh, one of the earliest spiritual practices by the early Christians it was they would go on the Via Della Rosa, which is the Stations of the Cross. They would walk through old Jerusalem and go to different, trying to, to follow what it traditionally was understood to be the way in which Jesus walked to the cross. And spiritual journeys and pilgrimages have always been, in a sense, a part of, of a spiritual journey. That in fact, uh, if you are, what is it, the Canterbury Tales, anybody who's read the Canterbury Tales, it's essentially a 14th century uh, kind of Middle English poem uh, uh, telling of the experiences of people and stories of people on a pilgrimage. And I don't know if you remember a year or so ago, Elsa Klein shared with us uh, that she went on, it, I always forget the name of this place, the, uh, the El Camino, the walk through Europe, and she shared that, uh, that months-long journey and how deeply meaningful and spiritual it was. And in part, it's because the journey is our home. And that may seem odd to our ears, we who are so settled in, but the journey is our home. So what's interesting about our text is that God says the very first words out of God's mouth to Abram is go. Go from your country, go from your kindred, go from your father's house to the land I will show you. Go. The very beginning of faith, uh, Abram, who becomes Abraham, who becomes the founder of three significant faiths, begins with the word of being sent out from safety Simply on a promise. And it's kind of odd to think about Abram responding to that. But it is, if we read this correctly, if we understand this sense of faith as a journey, this truth that God always calls us out of our fixed places, of where we feel safe and unrisky, and faith is always God telling us, go. Walk. Go to some promised land. 
And it's interesting, if you notice, they arrive in the promised land, but the journey has just begun. Go take those first steps. Now, there are a couple of details that are interesting in this text for me. One, uh, most of us don't realize how wealthy Abram probably was, how much he had collected uh, in family, that this journey he sent on doesn't only affect him. It is a journey of a group, a community, a family. And all our faith journeys involve a group, a family, a community who walks with us. And the other detail I love about this text is we're told, how old is he? 75 years old. That means that our journey can just begin at 75. So whether we're 10 or 20 or 30 or 90, God may be commanding us to go. But I've puzzled about why, I mean, what is it about Abram that meant, that, that allowed him to hear that. I'm sure God has told me a number of times to go and I just don't listen. But what about Abram? What about Abraham, soon who will be Abraham? What about him made him go? And, and what struck me was that, that into that 11th chapter uh, that uh, he went from a place of fixedness, a place in which life felt barren. And knew that God's call was to lead him out of that barrenness to a possible future. Something he could only hope for. And so our faith journeys is a belief that God calls us people from lives that sometimes seem barren and stuck and fixed and no hope. And yet... We're called to leave that behind and walk into a strange land where we don't know what will happen. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like good news, doesn't it? To be set free from how stuck we might be in our lives, in our communities as a country, in the belief that God calls us to walk a journey that will lead to something we cannot even imagine. Possibility and hope. I love that image of being a walking people. Now, Lao Tzu, I believe, uh, you'll see this on posters, a journey of a thousand miles. Does anybody know how that ends? A journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And I imagine for Abram, that first step was to pack everything up. I imagine that first step to step out into a future he, he's only been promised, a future he cannot envision, a possibility that probably he cannot even, even grasp. And yet he stepped that first step And he trusted that as he stepped out into that void of the future, he trusted that ultimately he trusted that either when he stumbles, God will catch him or God will help him to grow wings to fly. Now, a number of years ago, uh, there was a Japanese theologian, Kosaka Koyama, is a Japanese missionary in Thailand, and he founded, uh, this was... Uh, 20, 30 years ago, he founded what he called Water Buffalo Theology. And he wrote a book, a great book, and the title of it's probably my favorite title of a theological work, Three Mile an Hour God. Three Mile an Hour God. And why he wrote it that way, he says, you know what? Love has its speed. It is a spiritual speed. It is a different kind of speed from the technological speed to which we are accustomed. 
It goes on in the depth of our life, whether we notice it or not, at three miles an hour. Because that's the speed we walk. And therefore, the speed, the love of God, walks with us. So the journey is not a fast one into this future we yearn for and hope for into this promise. It's a journey that likely will take a long time because God is a three mile an hour God. So this week, I want to invite you to go on a prayer walk. I want to invite you to take a friend, go with a family member, and I want you to take a prayer walk. And it may seem a small thing, but to go to some place you've never been before. And in fact, it might be a neighborhood filled with diverse people, a neighborhood that may have a number of immigrants in it, a neighborhood that may be Uh, different and unexpected that you don't know what you will find. And I invite you to take an hour, 30, 45 minutes and walk that neighborhood. And in a prayer walk, what you do is you pray, first of all, for discernment. How do I see this neighborhood in the eyes, through the eyes of God? How do I pay attention to what I see as I walk through this neighborhood, the people I encounter, the homes they live in, the activities going on, how do I see this neighborhood through the eyes of God? And second, in that prayer, ask yourself and bless the neighborhood you go to. And ask yourself, what are the blessings? Where is God present in this neighborhood as I walk through it? Where is God in these people, in these activities, in this this community in which I see? And finally, do a prayer of empathy. Try, Try to truly understand in this neighborhood of these people you may not know what they're feeling, what they're seeing, what they struggle with. And I think you may find in that walking journey as God walks alongside you and among the people, we may gain some wisdom and understanding that enables us to see the world in a different way. And so I invite you this morning to go. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen.